In this video I'm going to set up a loop light which is one of the more flattering lighting setups you can use. Hey there, Rocco here, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be showing another single light setup that we can use in DAS 3D. Uh, this time something that's known as a loop light. Now this video is actually going to be a continuation of the previous video in this series where we created a split light. Uh, so the light's going to be the same, it's going to be starting in the same position as what the split light was set up in. Uh, so if you haven't watched, actually watched that video yet, then you can do so by using the link up there in the top right corner. And everything else in the scene is the same also. Uh, so we're using the same HDRI dome to create a little ambient light, as you can see here on the screen at the moment. Uh, so that we're not working in the pitch black. Uh, so really the only way we're going to be lighting our model is with the rectangular spotlight that we've got set up uh, that we've carried on over from the split light video from last time. We are using a different model though. Uh, this time it's Ensley. Uh, which is another great looking offering from Blue Jaunt. Uh, as usual, she's all dressed up and, and wigged up, ready to render. Uh, and again, all these assets you can find linked down below in the description. Now, actually, if we jump ahead to the, the finished render, which seems a bit weird doing it back to front, but never mind. Uh, what we're actually looking for on a loop light is this shadow that just comes down here off the nose diagonally downwards pointing towards the corner of the mouth. This is the loop in the loop lighting that we're looking for. So our light you can probably guess is coming from this direction pointing down this way and it creates this little loop of shadow coming off the nose. Now you don't want that loop to go too far down that it joins up with this shadow on the, the side of the face but you want it in this area just looping down towards the corner of the mouth. Now, before I delve into how to, to set up this loop light, I'm just going to share with you a little thing that I do with my lights, and you can also apply it to cameras also. Uh, it just makes it easier to move your, your, your lights around in the scene, and certainly for this for this video and, pre, and the videos that are coming, I want to be able to move the light around quite easily. So what I'm going to do, uh, I've got the character selected there, I don't think you really need that, but if we go up to Create, and we go on to uh, New Null, and we select that and we go apply default settings what we get is that it creates a null point at the 000, zero, zero coordinate uh, which it just happens to be where our character is stood and then if we go into the top view now and have a look down we can see here that our spotlight is set up where it was in the previous video for the split light and what we're going to do with that light is we're going to just click on it and then drag it into the null point that we've just created now, as I say, what that does, it actually makes it easier for, to, for us to be able to move our light around because what we do now is we click on the, the null that we created and if we come now down, down to the rotate in our parameter setting and we start to rotate the null light, the null point, the light spins and rotates around our character as the null point uh, rotates itself. I mean, if we were to just to take... Uh, the spotlight and rotate it obviously it just then rotates on the spot so if we want to rotate it around our character to get the best lighting position and we want to keep its distance exactly the same wherever we rotate it to we just select the null point and then we can just rotate that camera around or that spotlight or a camera if you used it with a camera quite easily around your little model or your subject and so now that we have our light grouped within the null point we're going to want to position it via the null uh, where we want it to be to give the effect that we're looking for. So we need to have our null selected up here and then we need to come down to the parameters tab and the rotate or the Y rotate uh, slider or the morph down here. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to rotate the null and thereby the, the spotlight with it to around about 30 to 45 degrees. So if, if we have it at 30 there, we want to be from 30 to 45. Now, the closer we are to 30, the longer the, the, the shadow is going to be in the horizontal. The closer we get to 45, and we don't want to go over 45, uh, the, the shorter the shadow is going to be in the horizontal. Uh, now, for this example, I just want to set it at 30 because I want to do a, a pronounced shadow. Uh, however, there's something you need to bear in mind. 
what we're really doing is we're setting up this rotation in relation to the rotation of our model's head. That's a hard thing to say. Uh, now, in this example, of course, Ensley's looking more or less straight ahead, so the 30 to 45 degree range is right. However, if her head or neck was rotated itself so that she was looking, say, more to her left, if we just have a quick uh, jump into the front view, let's say if we select Ensley's head and she was looking more in that direction, we would have to change that 30 to 45 degree angle accordingly so that it was 30 to 45 degrees in relation to the way that she was looking at. Uh, so we would maybe have to increase it up to 50 to 65 degrees that it would be rotated. But as she's looking straight forward, more or less, into the camera, uh, that 30 to 45 degree range is probably right. Now, once we have our light set up so that we're at this 30 to 45 degree angle, what we now need to do is we need to select, you can actually just select the spotlight here, it's no problem. Uh, select the spotlight, and then what we also need to do, if we come down to the parameters tab again in the Y translate, is we need to raise the light up also. Now, there's no real set limit on, on what to raise this to here, but the higher you put the light, the longer the shadow will be pointing downwards. The the lower the light, so if we were just a little bit higher, then the, the shallower that, that light would be pointing downwards. So the rotation affects how what the shadow length is in the horizontal, and the height of the light will determine how long that shadow is in the vertical, in up and down. Do you want a long light? Yes. Put it higher. Do you want a short light pointing downwards? Put the, put the light lower. And then the final thing that we need to do is just to come down for, to the rotate again with the spotlight selected and we just want to point that light down towards our model's head. Now if we now look through our spotlight you can more or less see the angle that, we, that we're at and this is more or less the angle that we're going to need and that is absolutely spot on that seems absolutely fine. So once again if we now come through to uh, our cam review which is in this case long shot face and then we take a look at the render. As we have already seen, uh, we've got the effect that we want with the loop light, just angling downwards from the nose, just right there. Uh, and it comes out pretty good. It's, as I mentioned earlier, it's probably one of the more flattering light and setups that you can do with a model, certainly in, in portrait shots like this. And if we were then to zoom out the camera to our different camera uh, positions, again, similar with the, the the split light that we did last time, maybe it doesn't work that great or doesn't show that well in uh, a full body view, although it does look better than what it did in the split view. But certainly in portrait shots like you get in the centre or the, the half body shot that we get here, uh, you get that nice little relationship between the light and the shadow. Uh, and that's it. That is loop lighting. Uh, that's all that you really need to know for it and all that you nearly need to be able to do. And again, it's just using one light. Uh, so that's it, Loop Light. If you've liked this video and you've got something out of it, then please like and share down below. It would be much appreciated and it will really help me out. Uh, likewise, because this is an ongoing series and I don't want you to miss anything, and I hope you don't want to miss anything, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below uh, and then you'll get notified whenever I drop the next video in this series. And finally, if you have any questions, uh, maybe about this video itself, about lighting or about DAS in general, then please feel free to comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So for now, that's loop lighting. Next time, we're going to take a look at something called Rembrandt lighting. Don't miss that. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye for now.